The mysteries of Chaco Canyon, New Mexico are many and great. Do its artifacts, architecture, and geocosmic alignments hint at a connection to Central America, or even to the ancient civilizations of distant Peru? Did this remote population center once serve as a concert hall, cathedral, observatory, or all three for ancient Puebloan peoples? Are the petroglyphs found here and throughout America's Southwest records of, or perhaps even advertisements for, the events that brought pilgrims to Chaco a thousand years ago? Join me to explore these questions and more during a visit to one of the world's most incredible, enigmatic, and deeply spiritual archaeological sites. With the sun high in the sky and temperature approaching 100, I continued my summer solstice exploration of Chaco Canyon. My next stop was Hungo Pavi, an unexcavated great house located two miles west of the park entrance. According to park literature, this site contains over 150 rooms, a great kiva, and an enclosed plaza, and would have hosted pilgrims who came to Chaco to attend ceremonies, trading events, and public gatherings. These great houses were religious and public centers for nearby communities and over 150 distant communities. Some sources claim that the name Hungo Pavi is derived from a Hopi phrase meaning crooked-nosed Pueblo, while others suggest it is a distorted title of a Hopi village. As you can see from this map, the site is shaped like the letter D, and its walls are not quite perpendicular or aligned with the four cardinal directions. Two periods of construction seem to have occurred here the first between the late 900s and early 1000s, and the second in the mid-1200s. The rear wall, located on the north side of the site, appears to have originally contained three stories. Strolling through the ruins of Hungo Pavi's west wing, I was struck by the thickness of the walls here, two feet wide in some places, which suggests both insulating and structural purposes. Temperatures in the desert are extreme, and thick walls can help moderate between hot days and cold nights. Also, with trees scarce in this region, the ancient Puebloans had limited wood for framing their structures. Therefore, they relied mainly upon mass wall construction, a method of stacking rocks horizontally. In this diagram, created by archaeologist and Chacoan expert Steve Lexen, you can see how the walls of large great houses are thicker at the bottom and become thinner with each additional level or story. Despite its arid setting, however, a significant amount of wood was utilized in Chaco's construction. Timber was imported from hundreds of miles away to be used as joists, beams, and lintels. The presence of wood here has been helpful to modern-day archaeologists as well, because it allows them to apply a dating technique called dendrochronology to help calculate the age of the structures. Other notable features in this diagram are wall openings such as T-shaped doors, corner doors, niches, and windows. These are characteristic of ancient Puebloan architecture throughout the region, and the corner doors may have aided astronomical measurements. I stepped into a small enclosure in one of Hungo Pavi's rooms to explore the masonry and use of timber up close. Um, but I just wanted to come in here and show the kind of masonry that was used here at Chaco Canyon. It looks like some sort of flagstones, sandstone flagstones. And then down here you can see there's some some wooden posts that were used as, as beams in the construction. You see it looks like they used some uh, some mud, some adobe. Very cool. I also noted what appeared to be a subfloor or crawl space. A number of large holes in the wall were likely fittings for six or eight inch diameter primary floor beams. These would have underlain smaller diameter secondary beams whose remains are still present in the adjacent wall. Not being an archaeologist or expert on this site, I could only speculate about the function of the subfloor space. Maybe it was actually a full-sized room at one point that had filled in with sediment. Or perhaps it was a storage space or pens for animals, much as the Incas used such areas for raising guinea pigs. I wrapped up my visit to Hungo Pavi by walking along its massive northern wall. The architecture here really is just as beautiful as it is enigmatic. Taking several compass bearings along the way, I noted the approximate orientation of this large wall to be along an east-west azimuth. I suspected there would be many more geocosmic alignments like this to explore over the next several hours. From Hungo Pavi, I drove two miles to the next site at Chetro Kettle, which some have suggested means Rain Pueblo. 
Built between 80, 950, and 1250, this is the second largest grade house at Chaco Canyon, containing some 400 rooms and covering more than three acres. It includes two great kivas, 10 smaller kivas, an elevated plaza, and a structure that seems to have contained three or perhaps even four stories. According to one source, Chaco scholars estimate that it required more than 500,000 man hours, 26,000 trees, and 50 million sandstone blocks to erect Chetro Kettle. Its D shape is typical of ancient Puebloan architecture, and many believe this site was built for ceremonial purposes. One archaeologist has proposed that it is an example of massing, or building large architecture to impress onlookers, and that it was inhabited by Chacoan royalty. Picking my way through the buildings, I suddenly spotted a feature that was familiar to me from my travels in Peru, but I hadn't expected to counter it here in New Mexico. And I'm drawn immediately to this shaped window, which looks like you know, part of the wall, half the wall is gone. But it doesn't look rectangular, it looks trapezoidal to me. I have a special place in my heart for trapezoidal doorways, windows, and niches after my journey to Peru, where the Incas and perhaps other peoples utilized this shape as a distinctive symbol of their architect architecture. Continuing my survey, I discovered more evidence of the relationship between the trapezoid and geocosmic alignment. I would spot this shape time and again during my visit to Chaco often as walls or windows oriented along a particular azimuth or towards a notable feature. In Peru, trapezoidal windows frequently highlight doors or pathways, distant mountains, or a horizon moment such as a solstice sunrise or sunset. Clearly, the people of Chaco Canyon practiced a similar approach, but in all my research, I've never read or seen any mention of the architectural similarities between these two distant civilizations. In my opinion, this parallel seems to be significant and worthy of further investigation. I have my own theories about the trapezoid's use, but that's a story for a different video. Chetro Kettle is situated near Pueblo Bonito and Pueblo del Arroyo in an area that scholars have termed downtown Chaco. Interestingly, Chetro Kettle and Pueblo Bonito lie the same distance on either side of a north-south axis that runs across the canyon, another example of geocosmic alignment at Chaco. The structure of Chetro Kettle is not perfectly aligned with the four cardinal directions, but I took several measurements that reveal fairly close approximations. Chetro Kettle is situated at the foot of a large, south-facing sandstone cliff. The site also sits directly across from a large gap in the canyon's southern wall. In combination, this location maximizes direct exposure to the sun, as well as takes advantage of solar heat radiated outward from the sandstone cliff. Beginning in the 1920s, excavation has unearthed relatively few artifacts, particularly compared to the troves discovered at nearby Pueblo Bonito. Among the items found at Chetro Kettle are macaw feathers, turquoise beads, thousands of which were uncovered in buried wall niches, wooden statues of birds, stone necklaces, and twined sandals. Considerably more artifacts may have been discovered over the past century, but no one seems sure what happened to them. My next stop would be Pueblo Bonito, the largest and arguably most remarkable great house at Chaco Canyon. You can explore that amazing site with me in the third part of this video series. But first, I want to share with you another mystery of Chaco Canyon. During my walk to Pueblo Bonito, I became intrigued by the sandstone cliff that backdrops these sites. Moving west along it, I spotted petroglyphs, such as this one of a spiral. I also noticed these peculiar holes apparently drilled into the rock, three of them in all. After returning home, I learned that one of these holes may include a tunnel that leads to a hidden cave. I also discovered that the sandstone cliff between Tetro Kettle and Pueblo Bonito may have been used as an amphitheater by the Chacoans. Its natural shape seems to have been refined by human hands for this purpose. Okay, we're on the trail west from Tetro Kettle to Pueblo Bonito, and this is this large, sandstone cliff that runs from east to west and there's petroglyphs in the outcrop but there's also these really bizarre they look like they have to be man-made 
it almost looks like like a, a hard surface was scratched along to create these grooves. And then you have something like this. And you have more of these really strange grooves. Let's see if I can zoom in here. I have no idea what those are. Those I do not believe are erosional. I don't think those are any sort of geological structures. The shape of the cliff serves to reverberate sound made at its base to the far side of the canyon. Conversely, sound made on the far side of the canyon is amplified at the base of this cliff. Did downtown Chaco serve as a massive concert hall or cathedral? Indeed, some 17 conch shell trumpets have been found in this area, most of them in Pueblo Bonito. Conch shell trumpets were used by ancient societies around the world, including the Pacific Island countries, Southern Asia, and South America. But I was surprised to learn that in 2001, 20 specimens, all ornately decorated and bearing signs of heavy use, were discovered at one of Peru's oldest cities, Chavin de Huantar, where they likely aided psychedelic-fueled rituals in stone temples some 3,000 years ago. However, despite their early and widespread use, Conch-shell trumpets appear to be a unique find in southwestern archaeology. Sourced from the ocean, they are symbolized by the spiral, the same pattern found etched in rock behind Checho Kettle. In addition to Chaco's trapezoidal windows and doors, are these shells evidence of a connection to Mesoamerica or even points beyond? How did they get here? Why are these shells not found at other ancient Puebloan sites? And were they once used to make music that filled this entire canyon? I'm walking back from Chetro Kettle on my way to Pueblo Benito. It's about six o'clock. It's almost, it's exactly six o'clock. I gotta tell you, it is hot. It's still over 90. I've been here for four hours and I've drank three and a half liters of water. And I'm still thirsty. And the weirdest thing keeps happening. All my electronics are acting really weird. Now, I'm not a kind of paranormal, uh, you know, I'm not into ghost stuff. But my electronics on my vehicle are getting really wonky. My phone camera and my phone is just, it's just not working. It's, it's never done this before. Even my camera electronics on my DSLR is glitching. I'm getting glitches during videos. So, I don't know, I mean, it's it's a little, I guess it's a little spooky. I'm not, in, you know, like I said, I'm not, I don't know, I've got three different devices having electronic malfunctions that have never occurred on any of them before. Just saying that's a little strange. And I'll admit, when I was in Chetro Kettle, I got a weird feeling. Maybe it's just the heat. All right, on to, on to Pueblo Bonita.